Hello, 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 and welcome. My name is Teneza, and I am the mother of three special. My kids are so special. Kids living in the heart of New York City. It is wonderful to have you. If this is your first time on my channel, welcome. I would love for you to join my YouTube family, my tribe. All you have to do is hit that button down below. The one that says subscribe 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 all right all right you have just clicked on a video this is the review for married at first sight the uk edition um season seven episode 18 and listen my heart you guys so i look at a nice notebook that i usually do I have in my bag I have, of course of course i have it in my bag so usually i take my note i watch the episode while whilst since we're the uk edition whilst i take notes in this nice big lots of room notebook right but yesterday we were out of town and i really wanted to take notes on the video i can't just watch it i have to watch it and take notes and so i had found a uh, gas receipt <laughs> and my library picking up my hold receipt and i literally so please please help your girl out hopefully i'll be able to read my small handwriting as we review season seven, episode 18. This was a doozy. This was a doozy. A lot went on. Let's just jump right in. They are still on their couple's retreat in the country. So yesterday, the grooms had drinks with the grooms and the brides had cocktails with the brides and they asked all those messy questions that I reviewed in our last review. Shanita and Jordan, uh, they wake up the next morning refreshed. They're gossiping about Matt and Whitney. How they seem to have a mutual attraction for each other. Oh, also that morning, Thomas and Adrian have a similar conversation. Matt says that Gemma is a nice girl. Speaking to the producers, by the way, because remember, since the very first day, Matt and Gemma have not been in the same bungalow, the same room. Gemma is staying with Thomas and Adrian. Matt is staying solo dolo. So the producers are interviewing Matt and Matt is saying, Gemma's a nice girl, it's just not his girl. Does Matt want, oh, I have my notes. Does Matt want to be a TV star? Cause I feel like he does. I feel like he he's kind of living for this drama a little a little bit. A little bit. Whitney feels that she and Duca are friends. That's it. That's it. And don't forget, guys, at the last commitment ceremony, she voted to leave. And she's only there because Duca voted for them to stay. Thomas and Adrian, they discuss April's fakeness. Thomas calls Whitney April's Yorkshire territory. <laughs> Okay, that's messy, but let's note. We must note. Thomas and Adrian are getting along for like the third episode in a row. This is like a huge, huge, huge three in a row. This is a new record for their toxic relationship. It's becoming a little bit not so toxic now. Thomas and Adrian are getting along. Sophie and Jonathan. Mm, I don't know about Jonathan, you guys. Jonathan says that they're friends, but he has no fiery passion. Sophie says that she fancies Jonathan and thought that they had a connection because didn't they consummate their marriage on the honeymoon? Jonathan, what's going on? What's going on, Jonathan? All the couples sit down for the couple's dinner party other couples namely Shanita and Duca, Thomas and Adrian everyone notices the eye contact between Matt and Whitney everyone that is except for Gemma Gemma just eating her food Gemma she's drinking her wine <laughs> and I feel a little bit bad for her I do I do 
So Zoe's the one that really breaks the ice and asks about the ladies' cocktail hour because Zoe was part of the groom's cocktail hour. Jenna tells her that all the girls said that Kwame was the sexiest except for Whitney. She said that Matt was the sexiest groom apart from her own. The next question they discuss is what groom don't you want to be matched with? Gemma brings up the fact that she said Jonathan's name. And then ensues an argument of body shaming, body types, just being honest, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with speaking your mind? What you really feel? Kwame tries to defend Jonathan, then Jenna goes off about body image and people could have had trauma. Whew. Like I mentioned, Kwame does try to, try to defend his friend Jonathan. Thomas brings up that his opinion is that George and April are the fakest couple there. George is over it. George is like, oh my gosh. This is my life right now. Thomas storms off from the table. He and Duca get into a yelling match. Duca's like, I am not the one. Duca had, was feeling the a a a a alcohol. There's no doubt in my mind. Duca was feeling the alcohol. And I think that he felt some of the sexual tension between his wife and another man and Thomas was the right one at the right time and got it, got it. Matt goes to console Duca as he is irate at Thomas and Kwame kept it 1000% real. He said the irony, what do you mean the irony? The fact that Matt is consoling the man whose woman he took. And he's not lying. He's not lying. At that point, Matt's like, you know what? I, I, even though he had mentioned it previously, he's like, it has to happen this minute right now. So he takes Gemma to chat. And he talks about the fact that he has attraction to Whitney and that they have done nothing at all but that it is something that he wants to explore. Understandably, Gemma is hurt. More than anything, she's hurt. She really wanted this marriage to work. She and Matt were a good match and she felt like he never gave her or their marriage a chance. Winnie attempts to explain why it's okay for her to vibe with Matt. The fact that they have been spending a night together since their honeymoon. The fact that she and Duke are not sleeping in the same rooms, even here. Gemma is irate at Matt and cannot believe that he is wife swapping. Why did Jonathan say that Gemma and Matt were dead in the water though? I mean, come on, it's been a week. You guys have to give things a chance, give things time to resolve themselves. I I just really felt bad for Jim. I really, really did. I could not imagine. Again, like she said, that they're married. They're not just hooking up. They're not boy. They're married. They're legally bound to each other. And the fact that after a week, you said, you know what? Nope, I'm done with you. Move on to the next. It's hurtful. And Whitney should know that. Duca is done. And this, it was good to see him stand up for himself. Duca, after all of this, after trying... Like they said in um, High School Musical, keeping his head in the game. He really gave Whitney a shot from, the, from day one when his dad was like, eh, 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 eh. the honeymoon, first commitment ceremony. Even when Whitney wanted to leave, he still wanted to give it another chance and not give up on it. But I'm glad that he finally had, you know, he, he set boundaries for himself and he's done. He's done. And he's right. Duca, I like Duca. There's only one Duca. There's only one Duca. And she may regret. We'll see, you know, if Matt is even serious. There is this saying that you lose them how you get them. And, mm. Mm. And the fact, you guys, they have no shame. Whitney and Matt have no, zero shame. 0.00% 0 .00 shame. 
because they're in the middle of the country on a couple's retreat. You guys are talking on a bridge, one-on-one, -on -one, mano y mano, and you guys start kissing with camera, production, everything right there. They have no shame in their game. Duca, sorry, not to, oof, 40 and slip. Matt invites Whitney to spend the night. She obliges. That's where it ends. Her waking up with him in the bed. In the bed. So, oof, that was a doozy. And that concludes our review of season seven, episode 18. I'd love to hear your comments down below, and I look forward to seeing you in our next review. Bye for now, tribe.